Corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. We now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center and the heart of the resistance. Rallying patriots worldwide. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, February 9th, 2014. We're live and Alex is going to be joining us live later in the show with comments about what is going on with the new offensive on gun control. We have a mayor who has now gotten out of Bloomberg's group and blown the whistle on them. This is devastating news. You know, sometimes we get tired of hearing the same stories we think over and over again. We get tired of fighting this fight against the same people, trying the same tactics. They continue to lie about what their agenda is. But we had a mayor of Poughkeepsie, New York, come out this week and talk about why he and 50 other mayors left Bloomberg's gun control group. Now, although 50 mayors may have left, we do have one mayor who signed up. Actually, we got two mayors. We got the new mayor of New York and the mayor of Boston. Both signed on to the confiscation group, the group of mayors against, quote, illegal guns. This is the Boston of mayor, uh, the, the uh, mayor of Boston statement today. He's now talking about doing a gun buyback in Boston. They had an accidental shooting of a nine-year-old by his brother. And in response to that, they want to take all the guns in Boston, try to get people to sell them in. They're going to offer them an incentive to buy them back. They're not going to do confiscation just yet, but listen to the way he talked about this. He said, we need help from the community. We need help from these people to let us know where these guns are. Who has these guns so we can get them off the street? So it's not just a buyback. That's the way they're putting this out there. They want registration. They want informants. Tell us who's got this guns so we can get them off of the street. They want to have registration. They want to have informants because that's what comes before confiscation. We've seen this with the SAFE Act in New York. We see that the new mayor of New York has now signed on to the Bloomberg Group. He wasted no time in getting in that. This is something that just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. But we had one mayor who pushed out against that. And Kit Daniels reported on this on Friday. He told us what this mayor said. He broke this down for us. We've seen this happening over and over again. We're going to give you some historical context for this. We're going to show you some new information, and we're going to show you an amazing story that's out of Texas, that's out of Beaumont, Texas, that really illustrates that things are out of control. We've got people in Texas getting arrested because they're standing in front of their gun shop with an AR-47 slung over his shoulder. A guy dressed up in a banana suit, and he's got an AK-47 slung over his shoulder with a sign pointing to the gun shop, and it's an unloaded gun. He's got it slung with a barrel pointed down, and the police come by and arrest this 18-year-old kid who's simply pointing out that this is a gun store here. It's a new gun store. And it's interesting because this gun store <laughs> changed locations. They were in a mall, and they got people who were afraid of them in the mall called the police on the gun owner one day when he walked in, which is perfectly legal here in Texas to have an AK-47 strapped over your shoulder. It's not legal right now to open carry a handgun, but you can take a long gun and you can open carry a, a long gun. And that's what he was doing, walking into his gun store. And some people said, we're afraid. And so they called the police and the police harassed him. So he said, all right, I'm getting out of the mall. He got out of the mall and for his grand opening, he's got a guy with a, with a gun on, with a sign showing where the new store is and they've harassed him. This is Texas, and people are afraid of someone who's open carrying a gun, and that's what they try to do. It's just like a political assassination. You know, Jesse Ventura said a long time ago, first they assassinate your character, then they assassinate you. They want you to be afraid of guns. They want you to be afraid of people with guns, unless, of course, they're wearing a uniform, in which case they can be as militaristic, as threatening, as abusive as possible, and you should just cower in fear to them. But if it's an individual with a gun, you should be very afraid. That's not America. That's not what we want to see happen here. That is a very dangerous situation. We're going to be right back after the break. We're going to break this down for you. Alex Jones is going to be joining us with a special report, and he's going to break down what's really behind Philip Seymour Hoffman's death. We've got the real answers for you coming up, and we'll be taking your calls. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
The number, if you want to call, is 877-789-ALEX, or that's 789-2539. 877-789-2539. here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com So we have Ian right there. What's his name? is a war. It's happening now. It will decide the fate of humanity. The time to choose sides has come. We are the resistance. We are the info war. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex on this Sunday, February the 9th, 2014. Now, Alex will be joining us later in the hour. He wants to talk about what is happening? This is amazing story that came out this week from one of the mayors that was in Bloomberg's Mayors Against Illegal Guns group. Actually, that title tells you a lot about their orientation. Because if you look at the Second Amendment, there aren't illegal guns, okay? We all have a right to keep and bear arms, and that right is not to be infringed by the government. And we've even had Supreme Court cases recently pushing back against this false notion that it is somehow a right of the government. No, this is a right that we... We delegated certain powers to them. These are inherent rights that we hone as being a person. These are natural rights. And we restricted the government from touching those rights. Things like our privacy, which they violate all the time. Things like our free speech, which they're increasingly trying to take away. We have certain fundamental rights that are there because we are human, because we're individuals. As the Declaration of Independence pointed out, these are things that the government is now coming and trying to take away from us, even though they were explicitly told they did not have a right to do that. That's what the Bill of Rights is about. It's about individual rights. It's not about the government's rights. And even the Tenth Amendment says, no, by the way, if we left anything out, uh, you can't assume that. It's kind of like, these are encroachments. You know, when they infringe on your rights, it's like the government coming across onto your property line. If somebody puts their fence on your property line, puts a part of their building on their, your property line, you either have to get them to move that off or you need to tell them that they've filed an easement for them to say that you can get on that my property, but it's still my property. Now, we've seen this happening over and over again, and yet we're allowing, if we step back and we get tired of this fight, if we don't pay attention, this is like allowing them to keep their encroachment onto our property. And after a certain while, they'll pretend that it's theirs. You know, you can legally do that in real estate. And that's the approach that the government is taking. They even do it with their secretive FISA court. They meet in secret with only one judge, no opposition, no jury. They come up with a decision. They publish it secretly. We're not allowed to see it. And then they maintain that they have changed and modified the Constitution. They might publish a notification about how some alphabet agency, maybe the EPA or the TSA or the IRS, is going to now encroach on our freedoms or they're going to add something with the FBI. FDA is maybe going to allow people to add something that is poisonous to our food. And we say um, they have a public comment period. If we don't publicly comment about it, they say, well, that's, they're fine with that. And they go ahead with their regulations. Now, of course, even if we comment about it and we say we're not fine with it, they still go ahead and anyway because we have a very docile, passive government at the congressional level, at the legislative level. They have delegated their authorities to the, to the, to the regulatory agencies so we have a very dangerous situation. We've got a federal government that is basically going 
wild. It's basically biting the hand that feeds it. That would be us. It's basically turning on its master. So we have a federal government that's really kind of gone feral. So, uh, you know, if you just take out the D, you got it right there. They go from federal to feral. And uh, I guess we should start calling it the feral government and kind of sound like uh, James Carville. This story, though, this story pulls us back. And Kit Daniels did a great job of packing in what's been going on. This is a Poughkeepsie mayor. His name is Kazik, I think is the way you pronounce it. It's an unusual name. He said it didn't take long once he joined this group. It didn't take long to realize that mayors against illegal guns agenda was much more than ridding felons of illegal guns. Under the guise of helping mayors facing a crime and drug epidemic, MIAG intended to promote confiscation of guns from law-abiding citizens. He said, I don't believe, never have believed, never will believe that public safety is enhanced by encroaching on our right to keep and bear arms. I will not be a part of any organization that does. He pointed out that there are 50 other mayors who have left. But now there are other mayors who've just gotten elected. We've got a new mayor in Boston. We've got a new mayor in New York. And they're joining the group, Bloomberg's group, because it was Bloomberg and the mayor of Boston that started it in the very first place. And as I mentioned in our first segment, just today, the mayor of Boston announced that they're going to have a buyback. He's trying to capitalize, as they always do, on shootings, on accidental shootings, on mass shootings. Whenever there's a death, you never see this happen if there was an accident. You have a 14-year-old who shoots his 9-year-old brother with a gun and kills him. Now, if he had backed over him in the driveway accidentally or backed over a young child in the driveway, should everybody lose their automobiles because that tragedy happened? That is not the basis for how we conduct ourselves in this country. They're only able to do that because so many people have gotten away from the gun culture. So many people are afraid of guns. So many people fear the mere presence of a gun. They freak out when they see it. We also mentioned in the first segment how in Beaumont, Texas, just outside Houston, we had a guy arrested who was standing in front of a new gun shop with a AK-47 slung over his shoulder, pointed down, unloaded, totally legal in the state of Texas. And yet they come at this guy and they, they arrest him. He was leaving. The store had moved from a mall because they had been harassed repeatedly at the mall for that very same sort of thing. People would get afraid. They would see guns. And they're going into a gun store. Listen to this article. Beaumont police, police were called to the Golden Triangle Tactical Saturday morning after complaints that a man dressed as a banana was seen holding an AK-47 outside the store. It was their grand opening because they'd moved from the mall. Back in December, the store owner had been stopped by the police inside of the mall for carrying an assault weapon alongside his back. His gun was seized and he was charged with disorderly conduct. See, it's not really a crime. They have to charge them with something. Because if they don't charge them with something, then they will, they will be charged with false arrest. And it really was false arrest. He didn't commit a crime. It's perfectly legal to carry a long rifle in Texas. But witnesses claimed that they were scared for their lives. Why are they afraid? Because they're not part of the gun culture. See, you can, in North Carolina, they had a, a fellow who drove a car through a crowd of people. He was a Muslim. It was an act of, of violence, an act of hatred. But he didn't shoot people. He drove his car through them. Now, if he had shot a lot of people, there would have been calls everywhere for change of gun laws in North Carolina, a change of gun laws nationally. But when he drove through a crowd of people, injured people, I think he might have killed some people. I don't remember exactly the incident, what happened with it. But regardless, when this happens with a car, if it's a car accident, you have multiple pileups, or if it's a deliberate act to try to injure and kill people, they don't call for cars to be banned. But these mayors in Boston, New York, elsewhere, they do call for those items to be banned. And they trade on the fact that people don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what their rights are, and they don't understand where this is all leading. Now, we've had this mayor say, particularly point out, the mayor from Poughkeepsie who left the mayors against illegal guns, particularly pointed out the hypocrisy of the fact that in Chicago, where they have so many gun control laws, that they have so much gun violence. I've talked to James Gerrock a former prosecutor in Cook County in Chicago. He was there for decades. He started out as a drug crusader, and then he retired. He's become a law enforcement against prohibition spokesperson. That's leap.cc. These people are former prosecutors, former police chiefs, former law enforcement judges, politicians who have seen the adverse effects of the drug war. And as he pointed out, in Chicago, the problem isn't that we've got too few gun laws. 
is that we got too many drug laws. 80% of the shootings that are happening in Chicago are happening because of the drug war. This is a war of drugs.